Hello students, uh, this video is going to explain the What is Life Part 1 PowerPoint um, and it's basically going to talk about the six characteristics of life. So when we're thinking about what is life and what constitutes life, what represents life, there are six characteristics that we always look for and as long as something demonstrates these six characteristics we can feel assured in saying that it is alive, right? So the six characteristics of life which is something that you should know uh, we have cellular organization, chemicals of life, energy use, growth and development, response to surroundings, and reproduction. These six things are what we call the six characteristics of life. Oh, and I forgot to mention, at any point, feel free to pause your video and take notes or uh, write notes as you see fit or rewind the video to replay something. So first characteristic of life is what we call cellular organization um, and that basically just means that all living things are made of cells. Cells are the base unit for life process or is what we say the smallest living unit that can carry out life processes by itself. So some things are just one cell like this picture right here it's an amoeba that is just one cell what we call unicellular and some things are multicellular which means they have multiple cells. All right. Uh, and again, like I just said, single cell organisms are what we call unicellular and they actually make up most of the organisms on earth and then in that one cell they will have everything that they need to be self-sufficient and survive. So they'll have everything they need for movement, getting food, transportation, breathing, all of those things all in one cell. And then you have some items you like humans, plants, and most and some animals that are what we call multicellular. So in multicellular organisms, those organisms have specific cells to do specific jobs. So you'll have bone cells, um, skin cells, muscle cells, root cells. So each cell in a multicellular organ organism will have a specific job. So here we show some examples of some different types of cells. We have smooth muscle cells, leaf cells over here, red blood cells, and a yeast cell and this is what a nerve cell looks like. Second characteristic of life is what we call chemicals of life and all that means is that all living things are going to be made up of certain chemicals. So these particular chemicals, what we call organic chemicals, are definitely found in all living things. So you have water, carbohydrates, and your carbs are used for energy, um, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. Lipids are like fat cells, proteins are protein which you know we use for energy and building of muscle um, and then nucleic acids definitely help create DNA. And This is an example of a cell membrane that just shows um, lipids that are used for the building block of the cell membrane and when we get to actual cells, our cells unit, you'll see that the cell membrane is what borders every single cell. All right, so the next characteristic is energy use. All living things use energy. Um, the sun is going to be our main source of energy, uh, but all living things are going to have to get energy from some source. So for plants, uh, they get energy from the sun, and the process that's used to convert energy from the sun into food for plants is called photosynthesis. Um, and then we, in turn, or humans and other animals, eat plants, and we get energy from the food that we eat. So you have things that make their own energy, like plants, which we call autotrophs, and things that consume energy or get energy by eating other things, which we call heterotrophs. All right, so plants, which are producers, they trap energy through the process of photosynthesis, and that's how they make their energy. Um, consumers, we get our energy from eating other plants, or eating plants, or eating other animals. All right. Other characteristic of life is what we call growth and development. So all living things are going to grow and develop. Uh, growth and development are two separate things, so you need to know the difference. Grow just means to get larger or to increase in size, right? And that's done through a process called cell division. So you're going to grow and increase in size. Develop means to become more complex or to mature. So when you're a baby, um, 
compared to now that you're a teenager, you have developed, you have become more complex. So growth and development are two things. Growth just relates to sheer size. Development means to become more complex or having cells that take on different jobs. Fifth characteristic of life is what we call response to surroundings. So all living things are going to respond to their surroundings. It's kind of what we call stimulus and response, right? A stimulus is single. The plural form of stimulus is what we call stimuli. So an example is a dog panting when it's hot. The stimulus is going to be the environment being hot and the response is going to be the dog panting. This is another example. If the pupil of your eyes dilate or get larger in lower light, so when you go into lower light your eye pupils get larger so to allow light to get in. So the stimulus or the thing causing the response is going to be that lower light. The eye, the pupil of your eye dilating, that's going to be the response. All right, human sweating when the body gets too hot, again, that's a response and stimulus. So the stimulus is going to be temperature getting too hot, and the response is going to be your body perspiring or releasing sweat. All right, so all living things are going to respond to some type of stimulus. This is another example. So living things can respond to immediate and long-term changes in their environment, and sometimes they can respond to short-term changes, right? So if we're looking at this fox or this plant, this plant, as if light is put in one corner of the room, that plant is going to grow towards the light. So if you notice this plant is curving, over time it's going to turn towards that light. This fox, um, when it gets to winter time, this fox changes its color and it actually responds to the stimulus of the environment um, being white. So this fox will have a white fur coat uh, in the winter time and more of a brown fur coat in the summertime. So um, all organisms are going to respond to some type of stimulus. The stimulus is a change in the environment and the response is what happens. So for example, when it gets cold outside, you get goosebumps. The stimulus is going to be it getting cold outside, and you getting goosebumps is going to be the response. The last characteristic of life, all living things are going to reproduce. So all living things have some form of reproduction, or anything that is what we call alive or life has some form of reproduction, um, and it's going to produce a offspring that's either similar to the original or an exact copy of the original depending on what type of offspring it's using, right? Reproduction is necessary in order for that species to survive, so all living things are going to reproduce. Um, and as we get deeper into this, you'll learn that some things are have what we call sexual reproduction or asexual reproduction, and we'll talk about that a little bit later um, in the unit. So again, the six characteristics of life, cellular organization, all things are made of cells, all living things are made of cells. Chemicals of life, all living things have certain chemicals and we listed those chemicals on that slide. Energy use, all living things are going to use energy and whether that be they're making their own energy from the sun or gathering their energy from eating something else, all living things have to use energy. All living things are going to grow and develop. Uh, growth is different from development. Remember, growth is getting larger. Development is becoming more complex. All living things are going to respond to their surroundings. So something is going to, some stimulus is going to cause a response, and then all living things reproduce in order for that species to continue surviving. So these are your six characteristics of life. So here you have one, two, three, four, five statements. I want you to read the statement and then let me know which characteristic of life that statement responds to. So here it says that boy shot up five inches in only one year. So which of these six characteristics of life does that statement respond to? And do the same thing for the other statements and bring the answer to these to class with you next class.